inclusive growth with you because as Okay, that is an interesting conversation with uh, the Tata Sons chairman N. Chandrasekharan uh, talking about uh, India's place, finding uh, India finding its place in uh, the global supply chain uh, and how that is, I mean, the world's need as well. Interesting chat. We'll go back to it, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a bit. Well, 25 minutes to go for uh, market close. Things are looking pretty steady. I mean, nothing... Uh, significant has happened. Uh, we were up 100 points when we started. We were up 115, 18,167. But stocks, of course, are moving around. Let's bring in Vinay Jaising, Manage, Managing Director, Portfolio Management Services at JM Financial Services. Vinay, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I, I would like a market view to begin with before we get into sectors, etc. And do you believe that, uh, you know, the mood has turned a little bit, right? I mean, more often than not, uh, the view is that, you know, this is a year where think we'll underperform and money will go into other markets, etc. It's happened so far, so people tend to extrapolate. So, you know, underperformance is broadly uh, the, the talk, very different from what we had last year. What's your sense, Vinay? Uh, is it going to play out that way or will we see something very different? So, so two things, you know, first let's go back last year. Last year, the world underperformed in absolute terms by between 15 and 20 percent. India was just about flat. But if you were to take the currency, we were down 10 percent. So we have a relative outperformance versus the global indexes. You start this year, I mean, the first 15 odd days of the year, India is still flat. But the rest of the world is up between 5 and 7 percent, and China is up 11 to 12 percent. So there is some catch up of China opening up. There is some catch up of uh, fund flows uh, or FII flows going out of India, going into Korea, Taiwan, and China. And reasonable numbers of, you know, one and a half to two billion dollars just, you know, in the beginning of the year. So we are seeing that effect of liquidity uh, of FIIs dry up in the country and move to other areas. Not surprising because valuation too in, in most of the other parts of the world are far cheaper. And India is close to its five-year average. Uh, for us, uh, you know, moving to your second part of the question, uh, what do we expect in terms of uh, the market this year? Uh, we think the earnings resistivity of India is pretty good. We are pretty resilient, uh, especially with banks. A couple of results already come out, and we are seeing between 13 to 14 percent uh, CAGR of uh, profit growth uh, for results which are out so far. Again, driven with banks at about 20 percent average for the basket. So it's fair to assume a 14% odd growth in earnings uh, uh, for the Indian market uh, as far as profitability is concerned. Uh, having said that, we are looking at India today more as an absolute market in the next 12 months as compared to relatively cheaper markets in emerging market, which could clearly get more flows coming, in, especially in the second half of the year when the questions of recession go behind us. All right, uh, take that point. Uh, thanks a lot, Vinay, for joining in. Um, as far as, uh, you know, individual themes are concerned, I mean, are you still backing the PSU theme? PSU banks, of course, are off their highs, but then we have a couple of stocks which have some triggers for them. Uh, you know, earlier we had uh, Mr. Prabhakar talk about how he likes the defense theme out there. HAL is one of the stocks. And uh, in the PSU basket itself, we have Container Corp, where expressions of interest are uh, likely to be, uh, you know, filed soon. Your thoughts on these two counters? I mean, one is a structural shift, whereas the other is a special situation. How would you look at these companies? Uh, these two, again, are two of the companies we very strongly believe in. Uh, as far as Hindustan uh, Aeronautics is concerned, there are two more upsides out there. One is, in a way, it's a make in India story. You know, having a Tejas, which you can sell to the rest of the world, exports are still only 1%, but if I were to dream and look five years forward, that 1% will substantially move ahead. Uh, the stock is more or less where it was in the last three months uh, at current levels of 2,403 uh, odd levels. So, it, you know, even the P is, is relatively appealing. We see an earnings CAGR of two years of about 10, 12 percent. And then, you know, you see the propelling of earnings because of uh, uh, good contacts, uh, good order book coming in both from the domestic world as well as the rest of the world. Uh, moving to your second stock, which is Container Corp. Uh, again, uh, we are very excited about it for a couple of reasons. First is, uh, as you mentioned, divestment, a special situation. But second, just think about how would you transfer any product which is coming into the country to the end consumer? And here's where Container Corp has a huge monopoly, uh, you know, as far as the rail is concerned. And we really like that asset. Again, it's cash plus, uh, very strong balance sheet. 
So it ticks the box uh, in a country where you're seeing interest rates or also a world where you're seeing interest rates move up. So it's unlevered, that also we like. Concar and Hindustan Aeronautics, uh, Vinay, afternoon. The theme that you clearly like are some of the stocks where there is uh, at least some headroom on the valuation front. The starting point is not very expensive. Could you give us some more examples of stocks that are on your radar, the stocks that you like, where these stocks are relatively cheaper, inexpensive compared to their peers? Sure. I'll, I'll try to give you a couple of names. You know, first, let's start with the biggest bank in the country. Uh, HDFC Bank, right? So HDFC Bank now, in, in terms of valuation, is close to two to three year lows in terms of price to book of sub three times. If you've got a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, risk taking appetite, the HDFC warrants as well. Uh, the results which came out were pretty good, you know, 20% top line growth on the loan book, uh, looking very, very robust, both on the retail front, on the corporate fund, they did, they could have done much better, but they let go, uh, which led to much better NIMS. So, you know, good actions on the return on capital employed for the company as well. So we like that as one, uh, relatively cheaper than what it was in the past. Uh, moving very quickly onto, uh, you know, other names. Uh, if you were to look at Arcane Capitals, uh, one of the companies which just got listed, it's trading between 11 and 12 times uh, uh, one year forward earnings. Most of the companies in, in, in its space are trading between 18 to 20 times again, a relatively cheap valuation stock, a little bit of make in India because, you know, they have the bromine chain. Uh, their raw material comes from seawater. Gulf of Kutch uh, makes it look interesting. Uh, another name, again, in a make in India theme, which is relatively cheap, connected a bit in the market, is Gujarat Fluoro. It's trading at a uh, two-year forward valuation of about 24, 25 times. Uh, most of its peers are trading between 35 and 40 times. Uh, good earnings visibility relatively cheap to its peers, uh, you know, that fits the bill for us as well. Interestingly, a couple of uh, the names which were expensive as well, be it Devyani or Trent, have also corrected between 20 to 30 uh, percent. Here, what, why we like the story apart from valuation is uh, the fact that, you know, when inflation corrects, their raw material will go down a lot. And uh, with the demand both Devyani and Trent have in, in separate uh, spaces, would lead to a reasonable revenue growth, but, you know, better EBITDA margins uh, in the future. Uh, Vinay, it's a short conversation today, but thank you very much for joining in and outlining the stocks that you like. Need to slip into a very short break. As we do that, we'll get you a check on what dealing rooms are saying in our segment, D Street Chatter. We'll also tell you what you can buy today to sell tomorrow calls from our technical experts.